know a lot, don't you? Yeah. Right, exactly. Well, this is a self-growing system. It is everything we need to grow plants is going to be in this box. And it is different than other growing systems because, as Ian said, it has a plastic top on the top. Now, if it has a plastic top on the top, how is it? How are the plants going to get water? Um, my name is Ann Crookshank, and I'm a right now I'm an, an eighth grade, seventh and eighth grade science teacher at Louise R. Johnson Middle School, which is in Manatee, Florida. I've been teaching 20 years. I started to use the Earth Box about nine years ago when I was approached by a gal from Master Gardeners who came and said, "Would we be willing to have some Earth Boxes in our?" outside uh, fenced in area and of course I jumped at it and then she introduced me to Blake and at that point I was teaching a gifted class I thought this is a great project for gifted kids and we also had an EMH class on campus these are the kids that have lower IQs and I thought you know it might be fun to have the gifted kids teach the EMH children about water conservation and plants and and growing and all that good stuff so we uh, set up an appointment and Blake came out he taught to our kids, as well as me, how to set up an earth box. And we had eight of them at the time. And so we brought, the, our gifted kids brought the EMH kids out and they planted them. The kids really enjoyed it. And actually the following year, I didn't teach gifted anymore. And the EMH kids took it over themselves. And they did it for about two years with just my help, but it was basically the um, EMH children. And they got a lot out of it. They really enjoyed it. And let's go through these water cycle words and see if you can tell me what they're all about. Okay. Currently with my class I'm teaching the hydrologic cycle and we're doing the unit, the lesson plan on evaporation. So we, about five days ago, we prepared the earth boxes and I had the kids take turns putting the soil in. We didn't add fertilizer, we did now dolomite. We just put the soil in and the water and we let it sit covered for a num five days. Then we started the experiment, and before I started the experiment, I really tried to emphasize the importance of a controlled experiment, and we talked about variables, and independent and dependent variables, so that was something really important to do there. And then we started the experiments. Everybody listen, what we've done now is we have let these earth boxes sit, and so we're going to now measure to see how much water each one takes. Does anybody have a hypothesis about which one might take more water? Samuel, okay. Uh, Samuel thinks that the one without a cover will take more water. Why? Because since it has no cover, the water is not free. Okay, good. Does everybody agree? Yes. Okay, give me a yes. thumbs up if you agree. Good job. Okay. So we took the graduated cylinders and we added it to the one box that was uncovered and one box that was covered. And they, they very slowly added water until they got a drop and then the students recorded it onto the chart and then the other students, the rest of the students, could control it in or write it into their notebooks. We tried to use as many, I tried to use as many students as possible getting them involved in the class to keep their interest and they seemed to have that so that was good. So now what we're going to do is we're going to continue this experiment and we're going to do it on a daily basis and we're going to measure the water. So I'm having different students come up every day and add the water, measure it, record it onto, their onto the chart and then into the notebook. So by the end of the, the five days, we'll have almost every student will be involved in the experiment. When I first started to do the earth boxes, all the things, all the lesson plans I came up, I had to do on my own. And about three years later, I was asked to pilot a curriculum. It's a K-12 program and it's made my life much easier because no longer do I have to think about coming up with the lesson plans, they're all done for me. Also, it really makes it, um, brings more of the science in, it, it, it aligns things with the national standards, so all of that's done for teachers, which is, I think, a great benefit. We were also very pleased to receive an Ag in the Classroom Award for middle school in Florida, and basically it was for the project that we have continued, and it's a service learning project. The students learned about the importance of feeding hungry people and they looked worldwide. Um, they looked at different countries and the availability of food. And then they decided that, the kids actually decided that in the earth boxes they would grow vegetables and they would like to donate them some way. So I did, called a soup kitchen, local soup kitchen that's not far from here, and asked them if they would be willing to take our vegetables. They were thrilled. And now they look forward to us bringing their, our yields of tomatoes and peppers over to them. 
When we were first approached by the Master Gardener to have these earth boxes, we had to come up with a place. And so right away, we had a, an area that was fenced in, as used to be for bikes, and we thought this would be a great place because I could lock it up. So we got our eight earth boxes, and then I thought in those days they didn't have the staking system, which they have now. So I had to put it next to the fence so I could tie them up. So we lined them up next to the fence, and then we put them kind of close to each other so that it would make it easier for the kids to water. And then when we first started, believe it or not, we didn't have a hose. So I was using watering cans, so it made it a whole lot easier to um, water from the watering can. So that's why we did it. Also, it faces the sun, it gets the best sun, um, and um, I can stake them to the fence. We're very fortunate in Florida to have sun a lot of the year, but there, we have our winter months where it's very difficult to grow much out in our earth boxes. We have tried some winter cold weather crops like lettuce, collard greens, and things like that. But we are lucky also that we have grow light, and the grow lights are great. They are able to be used in the classroom. I can put them over anywhere in the classroom. I could put the earth box by the window if I wanted to, but then since it's on the casters, I can just roll it over to another teacher, and that teacher can use it too. So a, a number of teachers can use a small number of boxes, so it really gets maximum use out of it. I found with my kids that they um, really enjoyed seeing results quickly. Um, when you plant, in the earth boxes, you get huge amount of yields, you know, lots of lots of vegetables, and very quickly. So that really got them more engaged and kept them going. Um, so they they really responded more to it. They wanted to plant more. They were enthusiastic about trying different products or different different plants. And the coolest thing is, some of them took what they learned in class and then used it to do science fair projects. And we even have had them go on to regional with it. So that that really makes it a worthwhile project for the kids. The kids also like the fact that they do not have to spend a great deal of time weeding. Because of the plastic mulch cover, there is no weeding. And that, so again, that's that's kind of the tedious part of gardening that kids don't really like. So then all they have to do is water, and it takes very little time to water, and the kids love doing it, and so they it works for us. Oh, I think one of the great advantages of teaching science through using the earth box is that you cover a lot of different disciplines. You're doing a little bit of germination and plant growth. You're doing water conservation. You can even get into, when you talk about fertilizers, you can do chem look at some chemistry. So you teach a lot in just using the earth box. Um, another benefit is I think the kids love it. And I think anytime you can get a kids engaged in doing something, that they're going to do better. And um, I've seen that over the years. They get very enthusiastic about it. They may little get a little, you know, a little more active. But you know, when you see them engaged, it, it, you really know you you hit something good. Using the earth box and the curriculum that goes with it has really made my life as a teacher easier, and it has made my kids more engaged. And I think that is, as teachers, that's what we're looking for: ease for us and engaging the kids. And the earth box does it, and um, it's been a great resource for me over the last nine years. I have to tell you, I grew collard greens one time and we picked them and I, I didn't know how to cook them. Well, so one of my kids, you know, I'm a Yankee, where were you right? born, eh? In Philadelphia. Well, you so one know. of my kids' moms, grandmothers, came in and she cooked them for the kids so they had to take <laughs> they could have collard greens.